My name is Carlos Morales. I run AI at Ambic. And today I'm going to show you a demo of uh, AI running object detection and tracking on the Apollo 510B. Let me talk about the hardware first. Um, uh, this is the Apollo 510B EVB evaluation board. We use it for developing software. In this case, we've connected it to an ArduCam, is a uh, camera that captures images and video and sends it over a spy interface. And so we're collecting that uh, that video stream, uh, decoding it on, on the Apollo 510B, running it an object tracking model that I will describe in a second, and then spitting the results out over USB to a laptop where I re uh, display the results on a Chrome uh, browser. Um, the Apollo 510B is an amazingly capable device. Um, it's running at about 250 megahertz, not about exactly 250 megahertz. Um, and it has something called a Helion, which is the, uh, it's a vector uh, engine for that, that is designed to run uh, the kinds of operations that AI needs faster. Uh, and we're taking full advantage of that in this demo. All right, let me talk about the model and what it does. Um, here we're using something called FOMO. FOMO stands for Faster Objects, Many Objects. Now, um, this is a, one of a family of models in the AI world that are collectively called object trackers. You, know, you feed it video, it identifies multiple objects of whatever kind of object you're looking for, and then it just tracks them as they move across the screen, at, across the video. Um, many of these uh, object trackers at, will draw a box around uh, the, the de desired object. So you've seen this in, in sci-fi movies and so on, or spy movies where they're tracking people in the scene and the little bounding boxes and um, maybe little labels and one says, I don't know, bad guy. Um, that's not what this model does. It's very similar, but it's very clever in, in terms of what it does. Instead of trying to draw that box, it finds the center or what they call the centroid of that object. And it puts a little dot right there. And so that's extremely useful for things like industrial applications or say phase detection on a security camera, um, because you don't really need to know the box around the face. You need to know that there is a face there um, and that where it is in the frame. The, this model is not a, a produced by Apple, uh, by Apple, by Ambic. It's actually made by, uh, let, me, let me kind of center that a little bit so you can see. Uh, it's made by Edge Impulse. We didn't modify it. We just downloaded this model, wrapped our drivers and everything around it, and that's what we're showing you today. Um, let's go on to the demo. So first, uh, I'm going to switch over to uh, the Chrome browser. And <laughs> so you can see that there's a little bit of video uh, magic here. I have a green screen so you don't see the rest of my office. Um, but of course, this isn't doing green screen, so you can see it behind me. Now, I'm going to get closer. Don't be scared. And it's going to start tracking my face. So you can see that it's tracking, tracking. Now, it's the color of, of the label is how certain it is a face, uh, how certain the model is that it is a face and not something else. Um, it's designed to track more than one face. So I, I couldn't uh, sucker any volunteers into this video, so I brought my trusty uh, squishy ball. And here I'm gonna do a squishy ball and you can see that it actually does think that that's a face. And he's my friend, so I'm gonna kind of do that. Okay, so let me zoom out a bit and talk about what you just saw. Um, again, this is all being rendered in browser. So uh, although all the compute is happening on this Apollo 510, um, the, the rendering and the video and all that is, is rendered by JavaScript running on Chrome. Um, so as you can see, we're only using about 850 microjoules per, per inference. So inference is one, you do that once per frame. It's only taking about 41 milliseconds. So if you've, you know, calculate that, if you're using 100% of your CPU, that would be about 20 frames per second that you could process. Of course, you're doing other things. And that's what we're showing the CPU utilization for. In this case, just because I like the, the image to look kind of high resolution, 
I am actually decoding this JPEG image um, into RGB on device. So I asked the camera for a JPEG image. I get it. I decode it on, on the Apollo 510B, and I feed that to the model. Because the model doesn't like JPEG. The model likes RGB, like raw uh, data. Um, it doesn't need this high resolution pre um, image. It actually can, it's computing on a much lower resolution image, which is part of the genius of the model. And it's something that people don't realize um, that AI does a lot. It, it, we downsample uh, data, and the AI is smart enough to still pick out the, what's going on, even with that downsample data. Right. Uh, so I can demonstrate that by uh, turning off pretty mode. Now, this is, this is a demo. It's probably going to get a little janky for a second. Like that. I wrote this code. You can blame me. Okay, there. So now you're seeing what the, the data actually uh, looks like to the AI model. You see it's much lower resolution. Um, but you also see that that yellow slice of the pie in the CPU utilization graph disappeared. So now this CPU is basically idle. It's running however many frames per second this is. I can't really count. Um, and you have all that blue space to do other computation, like running your watch face or running your, your AI analytics or running another model if that's what you need. Okay, I, I mean, I don't wanna, um, I know I'm obsessed with power, but I don't want to let this one pass. 150 microjoules is amazing. That is a crazy number. And by the way, this is a, a older model uh, uh, not so optimized uh, for our device yet. Um, we've seen much better numbers, um, and I should probably update the demo to show that. Okay. So what you've seen today, um, other than my <laughs> cheap uh, green screen, is uh, the object tracking, uh, an object tracking model running on an Edge AI device at uh, taking less than 41 milliseconds uh, per frame. Um, if you had asked me five years ago if that was possible, I would have uh, chuckled and said, you know, carry on. Um, it's amazing what we see every day, uh, uh, the innovation that we see every day. This, this FOMA model, very clever. I encourage you all to visit Edge Impulse to uh, check it out. And you can do a lot more than, the, the face detection is just kind of a fun demo. Um, but think about, the, you can train it to do other objects. You can train it to do, I don't know, nuts versus bolts or, you know, Cans versus bottles, if you want to do, uh, say, uh, recycling. It is a very uh, easy to train and, and flexible model, and the, the possibilities are uh, practically endless. All right, so thank you. This is Carlos Morales signing out. If you have any questions, reach out to Ambic. We're so happy to help. Thanks.